uh, with you about Jason Tatum. Uh, Jason already scored 50 points in a playoff game, and he's capable of doing that any, at any time. Uh, in the first game, Porzingis said what they did, uh, what he did, only because of Jason Tatum and Holiday said the same thing in game two. Uh, my question is, do you think that we are watching the best version of Jason Tatum in these finals? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty close. I think because of the type of player that he is, it's always going to look different because of his versatility. And um, you live in America or Brazil? I live in Brazil. Well, that's probably why you, you asked that question and none of the American ones did because they look at the lens differently of basketball. And so in America, nothing's ever good enough. And it's always about what can you do for me right now? And uh, it's not always the case in those situations. So um, yes, I think we are. And I think he's only going to get better. And um, he makes greatness look easy because of his ability to impact the game in many different ways. And he's just going to continue to get better and better and better. And it's an honor to coach him. Standing on your right, Tim. A uh, couple things, Joe. The, did you like uh, that one? I did. I did like that one a lot. Yeah, I smiled. Uh, I look at the game. I think in a decent way. Yeah. Uh, we just. You guys just put out a very long release about Chris Stapps. He has this issue with his left leg. He also looked like he tweaked his right leg. I saw him walking in before. I know he's listed as day to day. Yeah. Um, sort of what is the procedure for the next 24 hours? He's just yeah. getting treatment, and you'll see where he's at as yeah. of tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, he's, listen, he's, uh, he's doing anything and everything he can uh, to be ready for the game tomorrow. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, a much, it's a serious injury. Um, and at the end of the day, our team and, and the medical team is not going to put him uh, in any bad situations. And so uh, we've taken a decision to play out of his hands because of uh, the importance of him. And so he's going to do everything he can to play, and then we're going to leave it up to our medical team. Um, and that's, that's really it. And separately, uh, Jalen has talked a lot this year about the pride he's put into playing at the defensive end and taking on big challenges throughout the season. He's obviously guarded a lot of the elite guys. He spent a lot of time on Luka in this series. His teammates have talked about the way he's approached that. How have you seen him over the past couple of years really grow at that end of the court? And how important is it for you guys to have him covering and picking up Luka 90 feet from the basket, trying to wear his energy out, and then still being able to give you a lot yeah. at the other end. Yeah, listen, I think the growth of, uh, of him as a player has been like not being defined by one thing. And, uh, you know, when you have uh, your superstar players uh, know what it takes to win, and they're willing to take that on. So sometimes it's scoring, sometimes it's defense, sometimes it's rebounding, sometimes it's passing, sometimes it's executing. And I think the ma one of the major growths of Jalen's game is um, he'll do whatever it takes to win. And, uh, and that could change each game, that could change each series, and he's doing that. Hi. Hi, Coach. Um, a two-part quick question. Sunday's Father's Day. What would your dad say to you two games away from winning a championship as the head coach? One. And then two, talk a little bit about how your faith has guided you throughout these past couple of years and how you uh, lean on it to coach. Uh, what he would say? Um, he would say focus on the details. Uh, focus on the fundamentals. Um, the closer you are to winning, uh, the easier it is to become distracted by things that you can't control and, and things that don't matter. Uh, and here are the things that matter, and you got to fight like hell uh, to to accomplish those things with simplicity, with discipline, and mental toughness. Uh, everything he talked about was about your mindset and about your mental toughness, and that's what separates you. And uh, thank you for asking the second question. Uh, I think it's the most important thing. Um, I think the ability to handle the ebbs and flows, uh, the humility to understand that uh, there's a plan that's much bigger than just your, who you are individually and uh, having an impact on other people, and then using the gifts that God has given you to try to impact those people. So uh, it's my anchor, and it's been the most important thing, and I've enjoyed uh, just the challenge of having to stick with that in, uh, even when it's difficult at times. Standing on your left, Tim. Uh, Joe, Kyrie obviously hasn't uh, had the score with the efficiency that we're used to seeing from him. When you look at the job that you guys have done defensively against him, how, how do you evaluate that? Uh, I mean, I think he's missed some easy shots. Uh, I think, um, you know, I expect him obviously to be even more aggressive and to fight uh, to get those shots. Uh, the most important thing is just being detailed in, uh, in individual defense. It's not about shutting him down. Uh, it's about just making it difficult for him because of his ability to impact plays. And um, so we just have to fight for that. Uh, he's gotten some good looks. We gotta be, I think we have to guard him better. I think um, you know, he's definitely going to be more aggressive. We've got to be better in our individual defense. We've got to be better in our team defense. We've got to be better in our details. Left side on the aisle. Fifth Joe, oh, Joe over here. Um, I was curious about you know, when you watch players from afar and then you actually 
get them in your midst. So what have you learned and uh, enjoyed the most about Drew Holiday that you you saw from afar and now that you have him yeah. with you, like w what have you found out even more about him? Um, I'd say the biggest thing is like when you get someone and you, s and you realize that everything everybody says about him is true. That's probably one of the ultimate compliments that you can get is like your character is what it is. It's what you say that it is. It's what other people say that it is. It's people that have noticed things. So I'd say that like uh, everything everyone said about him when we first got him, it's been even better. And uh, just the type of person that he is. Uh, his humility, his competitive nature, uh, the way he treats his family, uh, the way he treats his teammates, how hard he plays, and just his willingness to, to do everything. Bobby, on your right. Bobby Manning, CLNS Media. Joe, did you see what happened when Chris Stapps got hurt in that second half? And what was the kind of the communication like with him over the last day here? You said he wants to be out there, he wants to push the play, um, but it can be out of his hands. What's kind of that communication like with him over the last day here? Um, yeah, I didn't see it, and it is out of his hands. Yeah, it's his job to fight like hell to put himself in the best possible position to, to feel as good as he can, uh, but we're not going to let him compromise himself. And so uh, that's really been it. It's just to say, hey, like, you know we need you. Uh, do everything you can, but at the end of the day, we got your back, and we're going to make sure we put you in the best position possible. How likely is it that he'll go tomorrow? I have no idea. Sierra on the left side, and then Gary, last two. Hey, Joe, Sierra Tsohi from The Ringer. I've got two for you. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, I've heard you talk about how you want guys taking certain shots for, so you guys have good spacing on in transition on the other end, and the way you sort of see the game is sometimes being like soccer. Um, I know Tatum sometimes gets criticized for taking, you know, pull-up threes, um, above the break. There was one where it turned into a Drew Holiday rebound. Uh, I think it was in the third quarter. Is that sort of an example of what you're looking for in those in those positions where it's just like, take the good shot, don't risk it? And if so, is that, like, where did that way of seeing the game come from? Yeah, criticism is the ultimate beauty. And it's just a sign of ultimate respect. And it's just a beautiful thing. So I really love the way Jason's handled that. And um, it's just a testament to who he is. And shot selection is all about timing. Uh, the, the, it just depends on the time and score, depends on the spacing, depends on the type of shot that we, the type of play we ran to get the shot that we want. Uh, you know, so it, they're, they're, nobody knows uh, what's a good shot and what's not, except the people in our locker room, because those are the ones that we talk about every single day, and we know how important shot selection is. And I think the greatest strength of our team is they fight to take the right shot uh, every single time down the floor. And they know what a right shot is, and they know the importance of uh, how a, the, the shot will impact your defense. Uh, and it'll impact your offense. And so on that particular shot, that was a good shot because we were in offensive rebounding position. The floor was balanced. We had the matchup that we wanted. And uh, it allowed us uh, to do both, to offensive rebound and to get back in transition. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you just try to learn. You try to look at different lenses. I think everybody looks at the, tries to look at the game the same way. So the more you can look at it from a completely different uh, spectrum, it allows you to build connections. Uh, it allows you to really focus on the thing where games and are, are really won and lost, uh, and not on the the stuff that's easy to notice. I think everyone notices the easy things. It's can you fight to notice the things that other people aren't because you know that's where winning and losing is mm -hmm. is in that space. And the other thing is, uh, Sam Hauser said that he noticed that you you kind of like you've. Cited, I think, killer whales um, and how they handle the, their prey. And yeah. you've also said that orcas are your favorite animal. I'm wondering if you could elaborate on how that. Kind yeah, of I mean, you just try to use different things to keep the guys engaged. It's a long year. Uh, if you keep talking to them about game plans, uh, it can get stagnant. And so you just try to build connections. Uh, you just figure out what's one thing that can uh, just get grab the guy's attention for an extra 10 seconds. Uh, something outside of basketball that you think can just hammer home a point. Um, you know, and at the end of the day. Uh, you know, that's the most important thing is just making sure you get through to your guys. So they listen. Gary, last question in the middle. Joe, Gary Walsh, Boston Globe. What kind of bond have you uh, established with Drew? You guys are more like peers, all yeah. close to the same age, and the, the sharing of faith. I mean, yeah. what have you learned from him this year, and what did you not – did you had you had any – relationship with all before he got here and what have you kind of how have you yeah. bonded with him yeah i mean i try to be like peers with all of our guys just because I, I you know I'm, I'm, the age gap is relatively there so i try to you know have a peer like relationship with all of them uh and then with each guy it's different because you can break down different barriers who's married who has kids who's you know uh whose faith is important sometimes it's not for people so you connect differently uh, i've always had an interesting relationship with drew because we share the same uh, app, uh, Hallow app, and you know, before I met him, he was actually on there, and so I would listen to his prayers. I would listen to you could, so I, I got to know his heart, and uh, then I coached him in the All Star game, and so I always had this spiritual connection that you know we would end up in the same area at some point, 
Um, so, you know, I kind of felt like I knew him before I knew him just because of the way he prays and, and how he, uh, you know, I knew his heart. So, um, and then our relationship now is, is, you know, sometimes we talk to each other, sometimes we don't, sometimes we just give a head nod. Sometimes, you know, I see his wife, I give him a hug. He sees my wife, gives him a hug and, you know, that's it. Thank you, coach. Hey, I got a question. Who do you think had the hardest adjustment, uh, to the, the, the media and the criticism because like the lens with which Brazilian soccer players are looked at is very similar to how American athletes are looked at by their media, right? And you look at where Neymar has been over his time and like taking on the number 10 and, and the number nine, like who do you think has uh, dealt with the most and how do you think that they've handled it? Because I feel like playing for the Celtics and representing the, you know, the country of Brazil for its national soccer team. And then now you see Enric coming up and like he's gonna face that soon. So like, how do you think that's handled in your country? Uh, you're talking about football, okay? I, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to see if I get, uh, I, I got yeah. you right. Uh, I think Neymar uh, has handled the the most pressure yeah. uh, lately, uh, but because we 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 had a lack of idols uh, yeah. most recently. Uh, if we were back in 2002, we had Ronaldo, we had Ronaldinho, we had Rivaldo, we had a great national team, about and this talent uh, has uh, uh, went down yeah. for the years. And Neymar uh, has uh, surged like a, a huge talent. Yes. And we put a lot of ex expectations yeah. in him I know. that he can deliver to us another World Cup. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think uh, it's pretty fair to him what we did. I agree. Uh, I, yeah. I would say the same thing for Tatum. Yeah. It's like, also, like, he's probably the first number 10 to take on the, the weight of Brazil since the social media era, like, right? Like, that was like who before Neymar was involved in that social media area. And it's like, he's so good, everything you do can be taken for granted. Like, when he won the gold medal by hit, making the game-winning penalty kick, you would have thought that would have solidified it, but it hasn't, right? So, like, I think that's a really, you ask an interesting question because I think the guys that were around uh, share in that same burden of having to handle, um, you know, the, the responsibility that they have to move it forward for what they do, and it's an ultimate gift. But I agree that it's probably Neymar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most recently, yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I have a particular opinion about it, but I, I have to see the, 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 the general thing about, it, about Neymar. Yeah. Because I don't agree of a lot of his actions outside the field. Uh, but I don't know him. All I know is the soccer player. Yeah. yeah. So if we, if we just focus in the, the soccer player, and I, I don't think that's fair. What don't the, get me into the coaches. Do. I mean, yeah. The way, don't get me into the Brazilian, the football coaches, right? I mean, that's like an impossible job. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah you can, it's a huge country. We love football. We love soccer. Uh, and it's, it's our sport that we were always good at. So it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And most recently, the, the results were so badly that the pressure is just rising. Yeah. You got to study. I mean, I study that a lot because I think we're in a similar environment here as, as to how to handle all of that, you know? Uh, Boston Celtics probably is just, uh, uh, for the basketball, is just that great as a Brazil, as a national soccer team. So yeah. pretty much the same. Yeah. And I know you love soccer. Yes. And I know you like Guardiola. Yeah. And I know you stole some things from his thoughts. Yeah, none of us are that good. We steal from everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Coach.